Let's see here. Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages, the Diablo 4 team has released a massive six minute trailer today out of nowhere, surprising everyone. They sent out a 30 second clip of it on social media. And as I was watching that clip, I spotted a, a few things, a few new we things, a few really important things that I didn't even actually mention out loud. I so I went to find out that there was a trailer itself, a full on six minute clip. And well, let's just say they have revealed a ton of actual new important information about season one. Yes, they talked about on mechanics, but this isn't about what they talked about with the words it's about what they haven't talked about but what they chose to show as visuals within the trailer itself okay the first thing of major note is that we were simply given incorrect information beforehand about the amount of new legendaries that will be in the season there are actually going to be a lot of them and i love that a lot of new legendaries a lot more than we thought and so with that to look yeah they forward, said it's going to be six new uniques but there's going to be a lot of new legendary powers to let's stop here break down this trailer from start to end in as much detail okay. as possible right from the beginning we see some super quick gameplay clips and an important thing to remember is that this gameplay wasn't just chosen arbitrarily it's yeah. not just whatever the devs were using even if it looks similar to what we already have in the current state of the game they chose these specific clips of these abilities for a reason this is a trailer essentially and it could very well imply certain abilities or play styles that are going to get buffed it may not necessarily turn out that way but it seems more likely to me than not we can okay. see so we got rolling magma. Okay, I got Evil it. Evil on Barbarian, which is currently a weaker playstyle, but a really exciting one. We see the shadow version of Blood Wave on Necromancer, which yeah. is generally considered quite weak. We see the bouncing fireball unique staff for Sorcerer, which is quite sadly weak as well. Uh -huh. And to me, all of those being included in that initial montage is saying, hey, these are some of the things that we want you to paint. I love how this guy's trying to make sense out of it, and I bet Blizzard was like, so why don't we have them do, like, those cool abilities that we, uh, you know, like that one where the, uh, Barbarian does, like, the fucking earthquake shit? Like, that was pretty cool. Yeah, let's do that one, and then one where the fireballs are bouncing? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, cool. Yeah, because that looked good more attention to do because they might be about to get some cool changes right after that we see the new boss being mm -hmm. added within the season we were told about this boss before we knew that it existed in theory they are mostly tied to malignant tunnels the new dungeon like sure. mechanic in the season but given the room that they are in here i would assume this specific encounter is actually possibly a part of the seasonal quest line itself sort mm -hmm. of like a story encounter for this one boss then we see i think that's a good way for them to do it by the way it's the same as they did Lilith, and I, I think they should do more bosses like that, where, like, there's a story mode version of the boss that you fight. That way the player gets, like, an idea of what the mechanics are, and then you fight them later on whenever they're actually, like, at full power short clip of the open world itself, which now is these weird yellow egg sack and tendril like things, mm -hmm. meaning that they have straight up changed the entire aesthetic of the open world of the whole map to match the season of the malignant, right, which even as a base concept, everywhere. just the way that sounds, is actually just, really just, cool. Just the entire world will feel like it's been engulfed by this crazy plague. You can see that it lights up when an attack hits the egg as well, which implies that it takes damage, meaning sure. it is an entity in itself in some way. We'll get into this a bit later, but my assumption is either that these are actually buffing the things around it, or that killing yeah, these exacts in the open world might even give you a brand new crafting material. Then we see a picture of a rogue on character select. In the top right hand corner, you can see it say that the season, season ends in October. So that means that the game, they're going to fix the game in like uh, middle of October. Okay, good. So that, that gives us a framework. So it's like three months until they fix it. Okay. It's on October 9th. They slip back this real quick, but I think it's a lot of assumptions. I think every assumption he's made has been like. I, I think these are all reasonable assumptions to make. Yeah, th these have all been reasonable. Important to note that that's actually up there. It could just be a placeholder, but based on the timelines that we've been told, each season will be around 12 weeks. These are smart. October 9th would place the season as being 11 weeks and three days, which is pretty much right on the money, mm -hmm. actually. Doing some basic math, they said expect 12 week seasons to expect four seasons per year. That would be 48 weeks. There are 52 weeks in a year, so in all likelihood, there will be exactly one week between the end of one season and the start of the next. In other words, the fun part of knowing when season one ends is that we can pretty accurately predict that season two is planned to start on October 19th, sure. likely after a big balance patch that will hit on the 17th. So mark that one down in your calendars for months from now to see if this logic will actually be correct for the future, because if it, it is, will. that means that we can use this to predict pretty much every season for Diablo 4 
ever. After that, we see a character creation screen with a necromancer. <laughs> Nothing too new here, but yeah, this is what whatever. the UI will look like on this screen in Season 1. A new form of this corruption spreads across Sanctuary, and interacting with this requires campaign completion. Again, we already knew that, mm -hmm. but seeing the UI element is sort of nice anyways. After that, we see the battle pass. We've seen this a few times, so it's nothing new to us at all. It's only the first few levels of it. Then we get another action shot of that new boss that we talked about, but in a different location, which all but confirms this boss will reappear in multiple encounters. It's not just part of the seasonal quest line itself. It will be a part... I think they should just steal with what, uh, steal what PoE does. And have, like, the, uh... You know how, like, you do on the Atlas, and it's like you can have, like, Uber Cortex, Uber Shaper, uh, like, Uber fucking, like, Searing Exarch. Like, I think that's what they should do. They should have, like, the story mode boss that, like, gets people acclimated and introduced to the, the character, and then have, like, the, like, base end game challenge boss, and then have, like, the Omega version of the boss for the hardcore players of the game and of the season in multiple places. The boss itself looks pretty sick. I'm actually excited to see this one properly myself in the game. After mm -hmm. that, we see more of the yellow goopy egg things in the open world. These ones seem to be just a bit more decorative. They don't actually seem like they'd be an enemy type of any kind. Then we have a big place worth talking about. This is Cormand. He is confirmed as the new NPC that we were told about being central to the seasonal quest line. He is Tron, the one main person trying to solve the malignant's plague, if you will. Here we see he has this this whole little base camp set up on a cliff line. Cool. There's even a stash here that we can presumably use without having to go back to town. That's very, and it's there that's for actually a reason that we'll get yeah. to a little bit. This is a nice little area with some that's runic nice. markings on the floor that I would assume are to keep out the spread of the malignants from entering his little... Well, I bet it's just probably a safe zone, so you go inside that, the mobs stop attacking you, which is good camp and affecting, well, him. After yeah. that, we see the inside of the end of a malignant tunnel. These are the new dungeon-type activities with extra malignant-type enemies that you well, can use cool. to farm malignant hearts, which are the main seasonal mechanic here. Just a cool view over the shoulder of a character as you enter the end chamber with the invoker set up in the middle. Then we get into the... What kind of a tip is that? Complete the campaign with at least one character before season of the malignant begins? Okay. Season journey. And here we have a lot of meat to actually break down because we simply... I feel like that's a bad tip, by the way. That's a shit tip. Yeah, you want to play through... Like, that's just... What the hell? So, so play the game now so you have to play it over again? Like, that's a terrible tip shown these screens in the season one developer stream we saw chapter one we saw a couple of the legendary aspects and the rewards at the bottom but we only saw the one chapter and in that chapter there were five aspects the two that we saw were class specific so the logic was that chapter one so rewards skip? five class but like you see like whenever people say so you can skip but like it implies that everybody wants to skip the campaign and also even if you skip the campaign you still start at level one like you, you, you still start at level one. You still have to level up to fifty. That's what I'm saying. Is like so you're making somebody level up twice. Yeah, and well, I don't know. I, I think like, I think that like if somebody went and leveled, they just finished the campaign and they just leveled to fifty. They probably don't want to do it right right away again. Like I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. But like, I don't know. Like that that's how I would feel. Fuck. Specific legendary aspects into your codex of power, right? In previous tweets from the developers, we were told that all legendaries and uniques being added in the new season will be added to the Eternal Realm as well when the season hits. Yep. In a separate tweet, we were told that the... Oh, 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 yeah, 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 they said that. That's on the 18th. July 18th patch will in fact add the new seven legendaries and six uniques to the internal realm. The logical reasoning understanding from those two mm -hmm. tweets being put together is that we would only actually be getting seven legendary season will have 72, 32 malignant hearts across four categories. That's seasonal only six new unique items plus seven new legendary aspects. Oh, so they, okay. So we're not getting like 30 new legendary affix. There's 32 malignant hearts, not 32 legendary aspects. I was about to say. Season six uniques for the season, but this couple of screenshots like five, immediately five, disproves five, like that one class completely. Space, one for each class In the season like two, journey, two, we know that chapter one. one rewards five legendary powers to your codex. Could we now see that chapter three screen, which also has five legendary powers. Then they also quickly click through chapter two a bit later on, uh -huh. showing another five legendary powers. Of What's course, this shit? Complete ten sellers? Oh fuck! Like they need to make like why are they? Of course, the implication here is that there are now five legendary powers unlocked for your codex per chapter, yeah. which was, by the way, my initial guess. Seven chapters, which would make 35 legendaries. Ooh. I would also go out on a limb and say that there are seven more than that, at least, which would be the seven that are going to be added. Wait, 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 yo, like, I, I don't think that, 
Nah, bro, like, because he's assuming that the legendaries that you get are ones that are new. Do we know that these legendary powers are new? Of the 35 7 are going to Eternal. Wait a minute. So you're saying that there are 35 new legendary powers and seven of them are going to Eternal Realm, but if you're playing on the Seasonal Realm, there will be 35 new powers. Because, like, that sounds too good to be Blizzard. Like, I don't think that happened. Like, I, I, I don't... He's not talking about any type of legendary affixes at all. He's saying 32 malignant hearts. Like, where is this dude getting 35 legendaries? Because, like, why don't we... Like, how, how do we not just assume that these are just the same ones that you get from the, the dungeons? I would also go out on a limb and say that there are seven more than that, at least, which would be the seven that are going to be added to the Eternal I, Realm. I don't know. The way that I see it is that these journey ones will wrong. only exist as codex aspects that you can imprint, rather than being on items that you could just find in the wild, as that is the only way to interpret seven the tweets class? from the devs up to this so. point, without just straight up saying that they said something incorrect, which is possible, but I don't want to say that either. That I mean, said, you think they added seven new legendaries for every single class? There's no fucking way they did that. Like, I'm sorry, boys. Like, that didn't happen. Like, I, I played Blizzard games for a long time. They're not doing that. It's going to be, I big guarantee you, if you ever have to, it's one for every chapter. Seven total, one for each class, two universal. That's what I bet it is. Lots of legendaries coming in the season. Excitement building even further now. Yeah, 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 dude, After that, we see know, what man. is presumably the first quest of the seasonal quest line, burning from within, right at the waypoint in Kiovashad, where an NPC tells you that they saw a person turn into a demon, the corruption spilling out when her skin burst. This is sort is of nuts, very surprise? visceral, and while it winds up with our understanding of what the season was going to be, this really helps to set the actual tone of it. This storyline will be dark. The whole season will be very dark, so just be ready for that. Be ready for people and monsters just bursting into demons being at the forefront of it all then we see some more gameplay clips a druid using cyclone armors active and then also wind shear as a basic skill a rogue using barrage with some imbuements and again a barbarian using upheaval possibly some more buffed ability if if rogue if ranged rogue was really good i might play it just for you know because i used to play demon hunter back in the day maybe they're related to some of the new legendaries, we'll have to actually see. Then we see a pair of level 40 characters taking on an invoker event. These are the things that you can activate in malignant tunnels at the end to farm a specific type of malignant heart. Good to have some more footage attached to that though so we can actually see what it looks like mm -hmm. properly. After this, the info starts to get a bit more spread out so we won't be breaking it down. Oh, quite uh, as what was this here? Earn favor, who gives a fuck? Oh, this is for battle pass, battle pass, battle pass. Ba okay, this is all battle pass. Gives a fuck. Tightly as we have until now. The next oh, bit of important info is that. expect new transmogs to appear in the game. Oh, yes, there are ones from the shop that will be added. There are ones from the battle pass as well, but they make a point of saying from gear too. So of course the implication there is that there will be new free stuff that you can just find in the game as actual gear drop. Oh, damn. Uh, so I really think what they need to do is they need to have like unique rewards for people killing these bosses on hard modes. Because if they don't have that, like, what's the point in killing a boss? Like, they've got to have that. From enemies, then salvage that to get the cosmetic look from them. Why do you then they talk a little it? bit about the battle pass itself. Not any new info on it, just showing the first 10 levels of rewards. Again, nothing major, but this is what the UI will look like for this screen. Then we see a few frames of Cormund in what I assume is his initial camp setup earlier in the seasonal quest line. This is the part of the burning from within quest. We assume that's the first quest in the seasonal quest line. And so this is one of the earlier encounters that you'll have with this character. After that, they talk a bit more about the smoldering ashes and the mm -hmm. season blessings. You get Smoldering Ashes from the free track of the Battle Pass, meaning that everyone can get them even if you don't spend any money. So you it's pay to win. Okay, I understand. So guys, in case anybody was wondering, Diablo 4 officially pay to win. That's it, guys. That's it. Pack it up. Pack it up. It's over. Spend them to upgrade different possible boosts Confirmed. for your character, such as XP gain from kills, gold from sales, rare materials from salvaging, duration of elixirs, mm -hmm. and boosted drop chance on rare malignant hearts, which is going to be very important as we get further into the season. We don't learn anything new from this, but the two big things that I would like to know are how many Smoldering Ashes are we going to have by the end of the season? Yeah. Will it be enough to upgrade all of these blessings, or are our choices here really actually going to matter a lot more? What level will we have to be for each of them as well is an important 
important thing to know. We can already see that the first Smoldering Ashes are at tier 8 on the Battle Pass, but require you to be level 35 to actually use them, so you already have a fair bit of work to do before you can even get that first one actually applied. Yeah, Directly they're after free. This, though, we see something brand... Yes, un unironically, I know I meme about this a lot, but uh, there's no way that you can pay to win in the game. There's just no way you can do it. It's just not. You can't do it new which is malignant heart crafting this is actually really cool we can make a lot of inferences from this screen first and foremost this is the camp area with the stash that we talked about earlier here we see three types of caged heart you know that there are four types of them overall one of them can go in each color of infested socket and then one of them that's just sort of a wild card that can go in any type of the sockets it would appear that you can't craft the wild card ones at all those will only be drops from the actual enemy encounters that's in the game and in theory okay. those will be the most powerful ones so that makes sense but yeah. you can craft three other types. We didn't know that you could craft before this, but how do you craft them, you ask? Well, we can see that crafting a vicious caged heart requires devious and brutal ichor. There is also a salvage symbol tab at the top. I hope they don't make me have to click this shit. Like, I don't want to have to click this. Please don't make me fucking click it. Oh my god. Like, you remember, like, that PoE season where they started uh, adding stacks of scrolls? Bro, that saved my life. Up, so it makes sense to say that you can salvage the malignant hearts that you aren't going to use, which it? will give no. you ichor from that type of malignant heart. Then creating a new heart actually requires the ichor from the other two types. That system is actually really straightforward. It makes a lot of sense just looking at this one screenshot, and until this moment, we had no idea we would even actually be able to full-on craft these ourselves. We thought they would just be from drops, so actually seeing this is really good info to be aware of that changes the way that we're going to be approaching this season. After that, we just go back and into a bit more battle pass talk nothing really new to see here yeah, then whatever. we see a big malignant goat man enemy spawn in which looks gnarly as hell and when he dies you can see the caged heart dropping as a reward it's just a nice cinematic view of how that system will actually work shown super quickly after that we swap to a bear form druid for a moment and jesus christ do you I feel like they could have added in some new models man like they added in the new boss that's cool but like i mean every like I always compare the game to PoE, and I know this might annoy some people, but I think it's very fair, personally, because PoE is like, that's like the, the next, like, best game in, in the space. Like, every new league does add in new types of NPCs. So I hope that they do have new NPCs in the game. A red bear? I mean, bro, come on. You see how red standard, this yeah. druid is? I know you can get pretty red from just getting covered in blood from killing enemies in combat as bear form, but that That's looks cute. intensely more red to me than blood. It looks. Someone says it is fair. Pewee's ten years old. Also, it is, and, and like they do a new. They, I'm not comparing ten years of development. I'm comparing each season, like one season to one season way more red before than what I've seen in game. No idea what this actually is though, but it implies to me that Clifford the Big Red Bear might be a bit of a hint towards a legendary, maybe a malignant heart, or even one of the new unique items That's that will be cool. added to the game. Then after this, it just shows some Eternal Realm stuff, talks about the concept of starting again fresh and how it is not as daunting as it may seem. All of the fun stuff and in this existing game footage that we already have, it actually cuts to show a bear druid who is notably less red, but still covered in blood, which I think lends credence to my previous point, my last theory. After that, we can see what appears to be Cormand himself, the main NPC of the seasonal quest line, the person trying to solve the malignance. I don't know, I'm sort of inferring from the silhouette, as obviously the lighting is intentionally quite vague here. Who knows? It's sure probably him. him. The outfit and the hair looks right. Yeah. But it appears that he is the one summoning the new boss that we know about. Potentially, this will be a big sort of bearer of the malignance, the curse spreading around, and he is summoning it to try and get us to kill it and defeat it in the hopes that it will solve the actual problem. Spoiler alert! The season is three months long. This will not solve the problem. Past this, they just go back over the fact that your Altars of Lilith and your Fog of War map discovery progress will be saved going from the Eternal Realm going into the Seasonal Realm, which is lovely to hear again, even though it's something that we already knew. And that's actually pretty much it as far as the actual info dropped within the trailer. The full trailer has been broken oh, down unique. right here from start to finish. All the important stuff, all the little hints that they don't say out loud, but they're trying to drop somewhat slyly. And the biggest thing, without a doubt to me, is one confirmation that we are getting it minimum 15 charge also calls forth four aspects who also charge that's a new one i'm pretty sure that is a new one i don't remember this one new legendary aspects to our Did they show power. more though in all likelihood it will actually be more than supported class poison creepers uh active landslide 
Uh, is this one new too? It is? Okay. Double that if we can extrapolate properly based on the information given. And two, well, maybe there are going to be thirty-five. Craft the There's like no hearts. way, though, right? We thought there were only drops before, but knowing that we can craft dude, if they the add thirty-five, of them actually like, changes I'll the be impressed. system quite a bit. It removes a lot of the RNG potential that it has. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it until I see control. it. All that to say, there is going to be a big yeah. Well, I'm not going to believe well that until I see it. Starts. The season itself will have a ton no of way. changes to our builds too, in theory, both between the balancing itself and then these new legendary powers and the malignant hearts mm -hmm. that we will have added as well. So we have a lot to look forward to here, and a lot of theory crafting in our future too for the people who like to come up with their own builds. Outside of that, we got to learn a good bit of flavor stuff. We got to see the new boss in action just a little bit. We got to see actual active visual changes that will affect the entire open world of Diablo 4 which is awesome. And we got to see a tiny little bit of the seasonal quest line itself and what it will look like. I'm really just looking forward to seeing even more stuff. I cannot wait for the season to drop. I've loved my time with Diablo 4 so far, and I cannot wait to see how it continues moving on into season one. Like if you liked the video, subscribe with the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, until next time, stay sweet. Stay sweet. What the fuck? Josh, okay. Cotton and Hollow with the so look, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep it real, right? If if Blizzard drops 35 legendaries on the first season, I will be genuinely fucking impressed, and I will buy the premium Omega Deluxe Battle Pass. I I will be like, what the fuck? If they actually do that, that would be insane. Yes. Yeah, so, so so like let's talk real quick about like what would I want to play? I'll link y'all the video. Give it a like. I think this. Uh, I actually I know people were memeing about it. I actually think that he drew a lot of good insights with the trailer. Uh, I I think that the insight with like hitting the, uh, the the those pustules in the open world and shit like that was smart. And like you know the was it like using the unused abilities like and it's like these are the ones that are gonna get buffed. Probably a bit of copium there. But we'll see. I'll talk a little bit real quick about um, uh, about like what uh, my plans, uh, my build plans for D4 Season 1. Okay, so number one, uh, based Necromancer. So that's my number one. Like, that's what I want to do, number one. Number two, actually, um, Ranged Rogue. Three, Thorns Barbarian. Four. That's it. Like that. That's that's it. Like uh, th those are the three I'm gonna play. So, druid? Nah, druids are fat. No, I don't wanna play. No. 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 No druids. Sork. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe if they have something really cool, but why would I wanna play a class when its main defensive ability doesn't work? I don't want to play that. I'll play Sork in Season 2 because you fucking know this is the thing. They fixed it? No, they didn't. They said they're going to fix resistances in Season 2. So whenever they fix resistances, I will play Sork because I bet this is what I think. I think that they're not going to balance it properly and Sork is going to be OP as fuck. Because Season 1, they're going to rebalance Sork to be really good even without resistances. Then the moment they turn resistances on, Sork is going to be unkillable. So season two, we're going to play Sorcerer. Season one, my main class that I want to play is Necromancer. Like, I want to play that. This depends, though. It depends on which wh what gets buffed and what gets nerfed. These are my top three. Now, there could be something I've never heard of or I never even thought of. But... I, I don't know yet. Wait for the 18th patch notes? Yeah. Well, like, what I'm saying is, like, going into the 18th patch notes, these are the classes and these are the builds that I want to play. So, whichever one of these three in order, like, if all three of these builds are viable, then I'll play Necromancer. If only Ranged Rogue and Thorns Barbarian is viable, then I'll play Ranged Rogue. And if only Thorns Barbarian is viable, then I'm only going to play that. Does that make sense? Bone Spear Necro is easy mode? I don't want to play that. It's just garbage. It's a garbage spec. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but, like, it, it, it's garbage. The gameplay is garbage. You understand? Gameplay. Like, I know it does a lot of damage, but it's not fun. Yeah, it's so boring. Exactly. 140% crit damage from sacrificing go uh, Golem. I think it's broken. I mean, I, th I think that Bone Spear is going to get annihilated.
I think that they are going to absolutely nerf the shit out of it. The Spirit of Necro is based in Menions. Yeah, bro, like, if you want to play, like, Bone Spear should be, like, a Sorcerer build. And it should just be called, like, Fireball or something like that. Like, uh, b running around, casting spells with no minions, that's what sorcerers do. Not barbar- not necromancers. What the fuck are we thinking? It's crazy, man. Necro's just a weaker sork. Well, it's a stronger sork in a lot of ways. But it's, uh, it, it, the, the utility is bad. Bone Spear is getting buffed? Do you think they're gonna buff Bone Spear? There's no way, man. There's no way you think they're gonna buff Bone Spear. You are out of your fucking mind. Bone Spear could be nerfed by 50%. It would still do the same. Yeah. It's fucking crazy, man. Minions are so trash. Well, yeah, but they don't have to be. Like, minions could be really good. All they need to do is add in two more legendaries, and that's it. Like, if they have a... a think about it, right? If they have a new legendary a new legendary affix and a new unique for uh, for Necromancer, minions could be good. That's all they need to do. I'm playing 6 and 300 400k bone spears are spoken? Yeah, I know. Thoughts on fizz, re uh, fizz resistance not being a thing? Physical resistance should not be a thing. I think armor shouldn't apply. Um, magical resistances. I think it's fucking stupid. Armor should be physical reduction. Resistances should be magic reduction. And that's it. What the fuck are we talking about? Yeah, you want to talk about physical resistance? You know what I call that? That's armor. God damn.